Hello, Fellowship South family. I just wanted to update you on what happened yesterday in service. I know that you weren't able to be there, and I wanted you to just to have all the facts of what uh, the kind of service we had yesterday. Uh, we're going into the new year of 2019, and so I wanted to highlight 2018 as far as the budget, as far as our attendance, and as far as our ministry goals. And then we went into 2019 and what our budget is for 2019, and also our attendance goals and our ministry goals. I will have that on a PDF file if you would like to have that, or we will have some extra copies in church this Sunday. But one of the main things I wanted you to know is that uh, we talked about what is it uh, going to take for us to be able to meet our budget and also to meet our ministry goals. And I took our body to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 because I want to show what we can't have happen within our body. Paul, to the church at Corinth in chapter 12, he's writing to them and he's using the analogy of a body and its many parts uh, to be an example of spiritual gifts found within the people within the church. So we uh, are one church, we're one body with Christ as our head, but we all have spiritual gifts, uh, just like a body has many body parts. The problem is, is that during this time, you had those within the church that knew they had a spiritual gift, but they thought their spiritual gift was insignificant. And so because their spiritual gift in their mind was insignificant, they didn't feel like they belonged. But then you had others within the church that they understood their spiritual gift and they actually had a spiritual gift that could be more seen out as far as publicly and thought they had a great spiritual gift. And so because of that, they saw no need for any other uh, spiritual gifts. And when we have that kind of mindset, that kind of attitude, uh, there is no way we're going to achieve our goals of having a the right meeting our budget or uh, achieving our goals for ministry in 2019. But also in that scripture passage, it lets us know what it is that we are to be. What are the truths about who we are as the body of Christ? And it said in verse 12 and 13 that we all have the same spirit, that we're all baptized in the same spirit. So if we are in Christ and we've been saved by him and we've given our life over to him, we all have the same spirit, no matter what ethnicity, no matter what your financial background is, no matter where you come from. You live north, south, it does not matter. If you know Christ as your Savior, then we all have the same spirit. He mentions in verses 14 and 17 that we have the same significance, that we're all part of one body. We have a universal church, which is every believer all across this world, but we also have a local body, which is our Fellowship South campus. And so what we need to understand is that we're all, we're all a part of one body. Therefore, we all have significance. It doesn't matter if you have a gift that is, that is maybe not as seen as others, you are needed. And if you have the spiritual gifts uh, that, that can be seen, you're needed. No one is greater than the other. Everyone needs one another and its significance. We have the same significance. You can see that when, if you ever stubbed your pinky toe. When you stub your pinky toe, every aspect of your body feels it. And so it's the same example. We need to understand that we all have different spiritual gifts, but we're all significant in the same. We also have the same source. You see, our spiritual gifts, they, they don't come from us. They come from God. God has given you a spiritual gift. And maybe you're listening to this and you don't understand what your spiritual gift is. That's fine. We have tools. We'll help you understand what that spiritual gift is. And then we'll encourage you and set you free to exercise that spiritual gift uh, through uh, teaching, through discipleship, through ministry, through evangelism, serving, whatever your gift is, we want you to be able to use it and we'll help you to find it. But all of our spiritual gifts come from the same source. Therefore, we don't need to fall into the rut of feeling like we don't belong or fall into the arrogance route of feeling like we have all the spiritual gifts we need and we don't need anybody else. No, our source of strength and our source of spiritual gifts were given to us by God. And so we all have the same source. Verse 24 and 26, Paul acknowledges that we're all of the same substance. We're all of the same substance. So we are who we are, one in, in ourselves and as one body. He lets us know clearly, he says, uh, that when someone hurts, we all hurt. When, when someone rejoices, we all rejoice. And that's what I, that's what I desire for our campus to be. That when somebody is hurting, man, we all hurt and we all feel for them. And when others are happy and rejoicing, even though it may be hard for us to rejoice with them, we will rejoice with them. Why? Because we are the same. And so we see here in Corinthians what not to be. 
not we see not to feel that our gift is insignificant so therefore we don't belong and we see that we're not to be arrogant and feel like we have such a great spiritual gift that we don't need anybody else around to help us but we need to understand that we have the same spirit that we have the same significance it all comes from the same source and we're all made up of the same substance I was sitting in my office this week as I was preparing this message and I remember looking at my wall and I have a picture frame with several different individual pictures of my family. And there's a title at the bottom of it, an inscription, and it says this, Family, comma, Life's Greatest Blessing. And I firmly believe, as we've said it over and over again at Fellowship South, that we are a faith family. That's what we are. And it is one of life's greatest blessings. There's no other place I would rather be than to be with you on Sundays teaching you God's Word, equipping you to do the work of the ministry, and then sending you and freeing you up to do that ministry. No place I'd rather be. And so it means a lot to me. It's life to me. But when I think about the word family, I think about it in an acronym. And excuse me if I sound like a coach, but that's just the background I came out of. But when I think of family, I think it starts with the F, and it says faith. It's not just faith in God, faith through Christ, trusting Him as our Lord and Savior. We need to have that in common. But it's also having faith in me as your leader and having faith in our leadership, uh, um, uh, our fellowship church leadership, that when uh, things come along, situations occur, that you trust us, that you have faith, that we are making decisions that are not only about ourselves, but we have you in mind as we make them. For example, people are always wondering about when are we going to have a building? Uh, we have been pursuing that. And we're going to continue to pursue it. We've had some that we've knocked on some doors and they didn't open. But that just means that those aren't the places God wants us to be in. But in the meantime, you have to have faith and trust that we do have this church and God's interests in mind. So have faith in Christ, but also have faith in us as leadership. The A of family, it stands for attitude. Attitude is how we talk to ourselves. I want to encourage you in 2019, as you come to church, to have a great attitude. Come with a desire uh, to want to worship. Come with a desire to wanting to, um, to serve. Come with a desire uh, that you want to be there. It's so easy for us to come in on church on Sunday and we just hate the world with how we look. Let's come in with a great attitude that we're ready to be there. We're excited to be there. And we're excited to be fellowshipping with other believers within our body. The M is mental toughness. Oh, mental toughness. That, that's something we don't really talk about a whole lot. But at the end of the day, what it means is this. What we're doing as a South Campus, what we're doing as a satellite campus, it is not easy. In case you missed it, I'm going to say it again. It is not easy. And so there are going to be times where the enemy is going to mess with your thoughts. He may cause you to question. He may cause you to doubt. But I want to challenge you, just as the scriptures tell us, to take every thought captive, that we put it in prison, that's what it literally means, and put a guard in front of it, that we are going to take those thoughts captive, and we're going to be mentally tough. And we're going to continue to pursue and persevere because we realize that God is going to show up and God will show out. But we have to be mentally tough in the process. The I of a family, it stands for intentional. Get used to that word because that is our word for 2019. We are going to be intentional. We're going to be intentional about inviting people to come to church. We have friends, we have family that are lost. We're going to be intentional about sharing with them the gospel of Jesus Christ and inviting them to church. We have those that we hang out with that maybe they're not in church. They haven't been in church in a long while. We're going to be intentional about inviting them, speaking positively about our campus so that they will come. And then once they're here, we're going to be intentional about loving them and being in a right relationship with them. We're going to be intentional about being part of home groups where we grow together as a church men's Bible studies, women's Bible studies, volunteering with the youth, volunteering in children's ministry, being a greeter. Whatever it takes, we are going to be intentional in 2019 to be about God's business. The L of family, it means love and it means to learn. We're, we're, we are so, I am so blessed because I believe that we are a loving church. When people come and visit and they leave us and they usually fill out a card, that's one of the things they'll comment on. When people join our church as a member, that's what they say as well. They say, this is one of the most loving places I've ever been. I came in as a visitor and I left as if I felt like I was part of a family. So we are a loving congregation. I'm so grateful for that. But I also want us to be a, a learning congregation. 
I know there's not two L's in family, but I like to look at the L in family as that we're a loving congregation, but we're a learning congregation. That you come ready with an open heart to hear God's word. I promise you, I'm going to give you my best. I'm going to study and prepare and trust in God through the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to give you my best. And I, and I desire to teach you in a way that is, uh, that is truthful, that is applicable, and that is teachable. So when you come and you come ready to learn, if you take notes, you can take what I've taught you and you can easily go and teach it to somebody else. Because that's what we should be doing. We should be learning and giving it away. Learning more and giving it away. Lastly, the why of family stands for you. This task of uh, meeting our budget for the physical year, ministry goals that we have, us fighting through uh, the difficulties of, of a church launch, it's not going to happen on the backs of John and Holly Powell or Nathan and Emily Shoemaker. And we can only do what we can do. And I can promise you I have the best worship leader in the world in Nathan and his wife Emily. And Ha and I, we are praying constantly for you guys. I know they are as well. And we're doing all we can do to serve you. But if this is going to be accomplished, it's going to have to happen with you. With you. So you need to figure out and pray and discern from God, where is it that you fit in? Maybe it's on a setup team. Maybe it's on a takedown team. Maybe it's when it comes to your, to your giving. Maybe you're not able to give and maybe you should start giving. Maybe you should understand as you give that there's three ways we give. And why do we give? We give, we give because it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to give in the same manner that Christ gave to us. And when Christ gave his life for us, he gave it sacrificially, he gave it joyfully, and he gave it gracefully. And that's how we should be given. So maybe you need to make a commitment to give more this year. Maybe you need to join a home group or get involved in a small group that you've not been a part of yet. Maybe you haven't plugged in this campus yet. Whatever it takes, you are very much needed. It can't just be done by Nathan and I. We need you. So, when we go into 2019, keyword, intentional. Same word, family. We are going to be a faith family. So let's have faith in Christ and faith in leadership. Let's have the right kind of attitude. Let's be mentally tough. Let's live a life that's intentional. Let's uh, come with a loving attitude and, and be willing to learn. And let us realize that it's about you. And if you were speaking that to me, it's about me. So let us go into 2019 excited and refreshed, expecting what God is going to do on our behalf. Hope you have a blessed day. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday.